Hi guys, uh, welcome to another lecture. My name is Mr. Eddie. Uh, today's lecture is going to be on the acronym Lower Inner Water. Uh, today we're going to aim to go through each of the letters of the acronym latitude, ocean currents, wind, elevation, relief, and nearness to water. And we're going to talk about how specifically those factors have an influence on weather and climate. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so uh, how I'm going to start the uh, lecture is uh, really by looking at the uh, terms weather and climate and how they're actually different. Uh, sometimes I actually have students use the words interchangeably in class, uh, thinking that they actually mean the same thing. They actually don't. Uh, so I, I encourage everyone to uh, please learn the differences between the two uh, as you move forward and uh, as you uh, hope to use them uh, in geography terminology. Uh, weather has to do with day-to-day uh, -day atmospheric conditions. So if I was to look outside right now, uh, right now, actually in Toronto, it's raining. Uh, that is uh, the weather currently uh, in the city. Uh, so that can change within maybe minutes, hours, days, etc. So uh, weather is something that's constantly changing. Climate, on the other hand, is more of a long-term pattern of atmospheric conditions. So uh, I'll give you a perfect example. If you were to use a, a place like Jamaica, uh, Jamaica, nice beach. Uh, it's going to be sunny uh, for most of the times out of the year. Uh, the climate is going to be rather hot. So those are long stretch patterns and that's how I'd like everyone to understand climate. So uh, hopefully uh, with that being said, uh, people don't mix up the two things. Uh, typically speaking, climate is a pattern uh, that's longer than or greater than 14 days. Uh, weather is more of a day-to-day -day atmospheric conditions. The next thing I want to look at is the acronym Lower Near Water, which is essentially six different factors that uh, significantly influence climate. Uh, the L standing for latitude, uh, the O standing for ocean currents, uh, the W standing for wind, uh, the E standing for elevation, the R standing for relief, and the N standing for nearness or proximity to water. Uh, we're going to start off with the L in lower near water and the L stands for latitude and latitude has a great effect on climate and the reason for this is that Earth is a spherical object uh, and because of that uh, there's a greater amount of sunlight that actually takes place or that's concentrated around the equator than there is at the poles and because of that there's also uh, a greater or a higher temperature around places of the equator. So if you look at uh, many different places, tropical places around the equator, uh, I'll use uh, like Jamaica, I'll use like the Middle East, uh, Sri Lanka, etc. So all of those places, the Philippines, they're all close to uh, locations of the equator and uh, there's a greater amount of concentration there. So uh, if you look at the diagram uh, closely, uh, the diagram suggests that the uh, sun's uh, light actually has to sh travel a shorter distance um, at the equator than it does at the poles. It has to travel a longer distance and because of that uh, there are higher temperatures at the equator. Now that ties into our uh, next topic which is going to be tropical zones. So you're going to find a tropical zone uh, anywhere on the planet between 23.5 degrees north latitude and 23.5 degrees south latitude. So between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Now these tropical zones uh, do have the greatest amount of concentration of sunlight and because of that uh, there's actually very minimal seasonal change. So instead of having you know four seasons, spring, winter, summer, fall, uh, you're going to have seasons of uh, rain, right? So if you look around the planet, uh, many of those locations have seasons or stretches for about two or sometimes three months uh, where there's a rainy season where the uh, location will get a uh, high volume of rain uh, in that given time. So that's a tropical zone in a nutshell. So between 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south uh, on the globe. So that brings us to our next letter in the acronym Lower Near Water, uh, O. And O actually stands for ocean currents. And what uh, is interesting about ocean currents is that they have a great effect on climate because ocean and ocean water never stays in the same place in the planet for very long. So it's going to constantly circulate. Uh, so because of this, uh, warm water that you know is found at like a place like the equator uh, will actually uh, be pushed uh, to a different region of the planet and will actually heat up that region of the planet. A perfect example of this would be uh, in Vancouver, Canada. So I've traveled to Vancouver before and one of the uh, things that I can remember about Vancouver is that it always has a mild winter, right? So you're never going to get extremely cold winter days there. And the reason for that actually doesn't have anything to do with its latitude. Its latitude is actually fairly high. Uh, considering the temperatures that actually receives in the winter. Uh, but the reason for that is, uh, is that Vancouver is strongly influenced by uh, ocean currents that originate in the uh, Pacific, close to the equator, that are actually pushed around and circulated around uh, the northern part of uh, North America. And because of that, uh, Vancouver actually receives uh, quite a mild winter. 
The next letter in the acronym lower near water would be W, and W uh, represents wind and air masses. Uh, now wind is very important to weather and climate because without wind, uh, our climate and weather actually wouldn't change very much. Uh, now to explain this, uh, basically what wind does is it uh, moves air masses from one location of a region to another. So in Canada, um, our wind, uh, or prevailing wind anyway, uh, travels from west to east across the country. So that would mean that, you know, weather that's experienced in let's say Alberta or Saskatchewan, uh, wind will actually push that air mass uh, towards places like Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, etc. So we'll actually experience uh, some of the uh, the weather conditions uh, later on uh, within weeks, months, etc. Uh, that were, was experienced uh, in the western part of the country. Okay, so having explained wind, I also think it's important to explain air masses as well. As you can see here, the diagram of North America shows various air masses in different colors. Uh, I'm just going to quickly explain uh, how to uh, analyze those air masses. Uh, so air masses uh, are really going to have uh, two different letters that are associated with the air mass. Uh, that's how we teach it in the grade 9 curriculum anyway. And now if you look closely, uh, the first letter is going to be a lowercase letter and it's either going to be an M or a C. So the M representing maritime. So maritime regions are going to be regions that are going to be close to a, a large body of water, uh, like an ocean, uh, sometimes a lake depending on the size, and the C meaning continental. So formed within the continent, uh, not close to the influence of water. It's going to be more of like, like a dry air mass, let's say. Uh, now the uppercase letters are going to be T, P, or A. So a variation of any of those three. Uh, T standing for tropical, so meaning that the air mass is formed close to uh, the equator or a region of the planet that is uh, typically warm. Uh, the P meaning polar, so not, not quite uh, like a very, very extremely cold region of the planet, but a cold one. And the A meaning Arctic, so in a very, very cold region of the planet. So you'll see these air uh, mass abbreviations uh, combined in various assortments. Uh, and uh, basically uh, what you need to do is just look at the definitions for each and that will help uh, provide like a general understanding of what that air mass is and where it was created and the temperature and moisture content of it as well. The next letter we're going to look at in the acronym lower near water is the letter E, and E stands for elevation. Now elevation has a large influence on climate because typically speaking, the higher you go into the atmosphere, uh, the lower the temperature is going to be. Uh, now I'll give you a perfect example of this in Canada. I'm, I'm going to take a place like Lake Louise, uh, and Lake Louise has a scenic area with uh, these beautiful mountains, and if you look closely at those mountains, you're going to see snow on the, uh, the peak of those mountains. And regardless of the time of the year, it can be 15, 16 degrees at sea level and uh, at the top of the mountains you're going to have uh, a colder temperature and uh, that's the reason that the mountains are able to sustain uh, the snow that's actually on uh, those peaks. Now another example I'm going to use is being in an aircraft. So if you've ever flown in an aircraft with a little monitor uh, that uh, more or less explains the temperature outside, uh, you'll see that sometimes you know you're flying you know several thousand feet into the air, 28,000 feet into the air, and you'll see that the temperature is minus 40 degrees. And the reason for that is that you're at such a high altitude uh, that uh, the temperature is much lower than it would be uh, at sea level. And this is, there's a specific calculation that I actually teach the students uh, for this. Uh, that will be in a separate lecture because uh, that needs a little bit of time to explain. It uh, has multi steps to it. Uh, but more or less, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at high altitudes, and the higher you go into the atmosphere, uh, the lower the temperature will be. The second last letter we're going to look at in the acronym lower near water has to do with relief. Uh, now, relief, uh, simply put, is uh, physical elements of a landscape, uh, like for example, mountains, valleys, hills, uh, acting as a barrier, uh, moving air masses from one region to another. So as you can see here, I've uh, just included a little diagram, and the way the diagram works is this. Uh, air masses, uh, like in Canada, are going to follow uh, wind patterns. And in Canada, we have prevailing wind patterns that move uh, air masses from west to east. Uh, now, uh, an example that takes place in Canada is uh, the Western Cordillera. So air masses have to move from uh, places from NBC uh, to across the country. And uh, what essentially happens here is that as an air mass uh, tries to move over a mountain range, uh, it's going to uh, be pushed up into the atmosphere and as it's pushed up into the atmosphere it's going to let go over its precipitation uh, over that mountain range. So when it gets to the other side which is known as the leeward side of the mountain uh, it's going to be more or less a dry air mass and it's going to be almost like a rain shadow uh, more or less. So that's the terminology that we use uh, in the grade 9 geography course. Uh, so uh, on the windward side of the mountain the air mass is being pushed uh, when it gets to the leeward side of the mountain the air mass is going to be dry so that section of the or that region of the uh, of the country or that area is going to have uh, dry uh, weather and uh, climate characteristics.
Uh, this brings us to our last influencer of the lower near water acronym, uh, so the proximity to water. So uh, places that are actually close to large bodies of water, oceans, uh, large lakes, etc. Uh, these places are going to receive a, a large amount of precipitation yearly, so a lot more precipitation than a, an area that would be like, let's say, in the middle of a continent. And the reason for this is that uh, as air masses are formed, uh, they're going to take on the characteristics of where they're formed. So air masses that are formed over water are going to be heavily saturated with water, and because of that, uh, any location of where that air mass is formed uh, is going to experience a, a lot of precipitation. So uh, you'll see that a lot of coastal areas, uh, I'll use an example like Vancouver, uh, lots of rainfall, uh, Seattle, lots of rainfall, a uh, place like Miami, uh, Jamaica, uh, all those places are close to large areas of water and because of that there's going to be lots and lots of precipitation that take place there uh, yearly. Okay, So that is the end of our lecture guys and hopefully everybody got a little bit of information uh, with the uh, acronym uh, lower near water. Uh, just please remember, um, all of these uh, six factors have a strong influence, uh, none more than the other. Uh, but really, when it comes down to it, uh, you're looking at like key elements of each, right? So latitude, ocean currents, wind, elevation, relief, and also uh, nearness to water. Now, I will be including a video uh, that explains uh, the elevation calculation, so that will be coming soon. Uh, and if you guys have any questions at all or need me to cover any content, uh, please make sure that you drop a comment below, and uh, hope to hear from you soon.